The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome, everyone, this beautiful Thursday, March 17th, to our webinar, hopefully to give some good information and training. I apologize that we have uh, you don't get to listen to the lovely Jen Coffey, who is normally running these webinars, but we decided that you'll be stuck with me. My name is Dan Martin. I am the president of ConnectSmart, and uh, I'm going to be having a special guest today uh, from our MSP, which is Connections for Business, and that uh, special guest is going to be Rob Leon. So Rob Leon is our uh, our director of operations and our service manager for uh, Connections for Business. So I'd like to go ahead and uh, have Rob tell me a little bit, uh, tell the uh, folks a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Uh, thanks for having me today. I appreciate uh, hanging out with you on the phone for a little bit. Uh, my background is I started in the managed services. Uh, arena back in 2004-2005 uh, out in California. I uh, worked for a couple MSPs out there, uh, fairly large uh, fairly large MSPs uh, ranging from uh, one was with 85 people, the other one was about uh, 30 people. Um, and I worked there for a while. That's what I did. And then uh, I've uh, done other things in the managed service community and been involved uh, since back, since way back when. Uh, recently, I've you know I've been here for about nine months now, working at Connections for Business. Uh, really excited to be on board, and we're doing a lot of great things. And uh, and connect uh, connect smart with something new that I uh, that I landed on when I when I came on board here. Cool. So tell me a little bit about that, because uh, I know we had some we had some a little bit of different differing of opinions when you first uh, landed in sunny South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> That that would be a truism. Um, so, in my in 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 my past lives, I've I've worked primarily uh, out of the uh, we use ConnectWise, and I come from a ConnectWise background. Been using ConnectWise since since the good old days, and uh, and was pretty familiar with managing ConnectWise from you know soup to nuts. Anything you needed to know, you could do inside of ConnectWise, and I you know worked the traditional angle of you know pulling up a service board you know, managing tickets via the status up there, you know, uh, refreshing that board. As you see new uh, new tickets come in, you assign those to an engineer and you kind of manage off of that service board. And as you grow, as you grow, you have multiple service boards for different things and you kind of navigate between the screens and do the best you can. And, uh, you know, it was, it's just what you did and it's, and it's the world that I, that I lived in and it's what I knew. Um, I came over to Connections for Business and there was dashboards everywhere. We had uh, there was uh, actually not everywhere, but there was a handful of dashboards that we used to, to run the business. And uh, it was an interesting thing. My first day, I walked in the door, and as you come in the main door, there's a giant screen in the lobby that basically has a dashboard and tells you this is how our company is doing today. These are our these are our service level agreements and how we match to them. And uh, and uh, you shared a great story about that, and so I tried to absorb it into my world. So. <laughs> It's a it, and it's it's an interesting thing, Dan, because we work. You know, I looked I, I I looked at some of these things and I'm like, well, how do people even work? You know, what do they do? They have all these buttons and knobs and and some of the stuff didn't make sense to me and other stuff was made a lot of sense. Uh, and as I've used it over the past nine months now, we actually rely uh, heavily, and I've been converted over to the uh, to the world. Doubting Thomas has been uh, <laughs> entered and, and come to the light. Um, and we actually we do leverage it on a daily basis, uh, on a regular basis throughout the day to know where we're at uh, in the business, as well as for each one of the engineers. It, you know, it helps us to know where somebody's at currently at in the day. You know, what's on their plate? What do they What do they need to do to make sure that they're maintaining uh, and doing the stuff that they need to do? And and one of the cool things about this for me has been the way that it kind of it abstracts the concept of having to deal with jumping around and navigating a ticket system and and the other pieces which can be cumbersome at times and just you know renders it in a in a simple to use format that I can bring guys on and one of the cool things is it helps me to get engineers up to speed quickly uh, in training because I can point them to the things that matter most and say these are the things I need you to focus on and the guys get that and then they can focus on doing the stuff that they do best which is the tech stuff 
Excellent. Yeah, we. I know we've done a bunch of different webinars on some of the NOC things and from the, the service management side, and uh, we may do some more of those kind of going through how we run our NOC and how we run our service management and dispatch. But today, uh, let's kind of focus on the engineer, because that's what we're talking about, kind of that day in the life of the engineer. And can you explain to me uh, kind of what we have up here on the screen? I'm going to uh, see if I can change the resolution here just a little bit, just to make it a little bit easier for uh, people to see on the remote. Can you mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about this? So this is the dashboard that we, uh, each one of our engineers has uh, multiple monitors on their desk. They have monitors they do their work on, and they always, and then they have one monitor that we have for each engineer that is dedicated for them to be uh, tracking uh, the work that they're doing on. And this is their dashboard that they use. So there's certain fields that are, uh, all the different fields on here have some reason why we decided to put them on here and how they service uh, and how our guys use this to provide service to the clients. Um, cool. Let me, uh, uh, I'll mention one thing that uh, I think this was actually something that Jen uh, Coffey, one of our consultants, had, had started doing. And we found that, you know, we had, uh, everybody had a little uh, cheat sheet and the short list of, hey, make sure you do this every time. So you'll see over on the right hand side that uh, we actually put into our dashboard here really those things that we expect people to do every single time on every ticket. Uh, you know, kind of those instructions that instead of telling somebody to, you know, make sure you look at the documentation or, you know, having that pinned up on their uh, on their cubicle wall, we actually added that right into the dashboard. So they've always got it sitting there as a reminder of what they're supposed to do with each ticket and then also what each of the service statuses mean. Yep. And that's, and that is, it's a, it's one of those things which it's, it helps from a training perspective and it helps to set the expectation and just be clear with, the team of what's expected of them when they're uh, assisting clients. Yeah, and, and also we'll make, a, let me make a disclaimer here as well. Uh, when I first had uh, pulled open the dashboard, I think uh, Rob went to go run upstairs to go kill somebody. Um, this is using our, <laughs> this is using a connections for business uh, using one of our dashboards, but we're not using the live engineer's data. So uh, he didn't have somebody to go beat up of who was missing a bunch of stuff. I think the past dues when he first saw it was like a hundred and something. So uh, we are using some uh, you know non non customer data so that uh, we don't have customer data sitting out there in a webinar. So back to you. Yeah, and we have yeah and, yeah and some of our we we service. Uh, we have a large medical base of, of clients that we support, and so those clients have HIPAA regulations, and we just want to make sure we're not uh, – all that stuff is kept secure within our system, but sometimes, you know, we do the best we can. We don't want any, <laughs> any weirdness floating out on the – in the cloud there. Exactly. So we're going to be put, we're going to be uh, picking on Jen uh, since she's not doing the presentation today, uh, and we're going to be looking at a uh, looking at the engineer's dashboard if, if it was looking at Jen's information in our test bed. So. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. I'll go ahead and start on the on this first one, the customer updated. To me, this is, has been one of the things that has really been a big driver in how we interact with our customers. And it's, it's really the idea behind it. As soon as a customer updates uh, a ticket via the web or via uh, email, you know, doing a response to it, it's going to go ahead and flip that, you know, flips that flag inside of ConnectWise and we update the service status so that we know that that's been updated. That's well and good. We can, of course, see that. But what we've done in our, uh, in our organization to operate this a little bit differently is we always had a rule, which was, you know, if that number's not at zero, is that managed to zero, get, it, get those numbers down to zero. If it's not at zero, then no one's supposed to leave the room. So what that does for us is as soon as a customer updates a, uh, a ticket, then everybody is really responsible to make sure that they're being updated as quickly as possible. And when we do that, that really starts to change behavior of our customers as well. Because if they're getting that super quick response via, you know, that electronic mechanism, then that's going to be their go-to mechanism. And they're going to be a little little less on the phone, which is obviously our highest cost of providing service uh, in an MSP is those phone calls. So you can you may be able to answer the, answer the uh, email or update the ticket in a couple minutes, but you're not going to get off the phone that quickly. So it really starts to change behavior. And for those of, uh, of you who may not be familiar with some of the idea of ConnectSmart, I know we're talking about the individual engineers, but 
uh, one of the the big things is it's not just seeing the information, but it's really that ability to take action on it. So in this case, I just clicked on the act activities that we have due today, and you can see that uh, Jen had uh, has four activities here that are supposed to be done for today. So we can we can actually click on on these. I can go to the schedule record in the calendar. I go directly to the ticket if it's ticket related or if it's just an activity as you can see a couple of these are. I can go right to the activity. So it's really all about driving uh, you know providing that tool for someone to use to make it really easy to do their job. You see an uh, you see a number, you click on it, you drill down on it, it takes you all the way straight through. Yeah, and that's a that's a the 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 what's the word? The ability to drill down on any of these on any of these fields is really key because um, it's not just some screen that you're looking at. It's the ability to interact and dive right into ConnectWise and be able to uh, enter your time and uh, and support the client is is the key thing here. So th this yeah. is really just the, the front of mind. Hey, how am I doing? Oh, look at this. You know, look, this just happened. And, and the customer updated is, is like, as Dan said, it's a, it's a really cool feature because it, it lets you know, hey, my customer just updated, they responded to me, you can look at it. A lot of the times we find that those are just the customer saying, hey, thanks so much for fixing my ticket because we'll go ahead and finish the ticket, we'll mark it as completed, and then they'll write back and say, hey, thank you very much. Uh, and so we'll see that it flags customer updated. But, you know, sometimes and, uh, and other times it's not, and it lets us know, hey, the person's available for us right now or they had one more question that I need to answer for them, so we can just grab that, address that issue, and then uh, and be responsive. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a, a couple of things I'd like to point out on this particular dashboard. Um, one of them is making sure that we're really doing our work in as real time as possible. And uh, in our, in our uh, level one help desk, uh, our T1 side, we want to make sure as soon as their a dispatch gives them a ticket, they move that to in progress when they're working on it. And once it's in progress, they're going to see that in this uh, my, my currently scheduled item. So what are they currently working on? That's the ticket that they have in progress. So it kind of gives that reminder. So it's really easy to be working on a ticket, uh, go to the next thing, and you didn't update the service status. It's still left in that in progress status. So uh, you know, as they look at their uh, as they're looking at their dashboard, they can see you know what's the current ticket. If that's not the one they're currently working on, or is that reminder they need to go fix it? So they can click on it to go update that service, uh, update that ticket. And then also seeing what's that next item. When is the the next thing on their schedule uh, that they need to be aware of? So they again giving somebody the context of what they need to be doing so that they're not, as Rob said earlier, jumping around back and forth inside of a system and, uh, and you know, different tools to be able to do their job. You know, we really, we hired them to be engineers and to be technicians, to be great on the phone, to work with people, to solve people's problems. And more often than not, a, a lot of our uh, reason for falling down is we get lost in the systems. And so that's really the idea behind the engineer's dashboard is to provide them with just the information that they need to be able to do their job. And it's up to Rob as the service manager to be able to, ter to determine what's important, what are those pieces that he wants to focus on, put those in front of them on their dashboard, and then let them loose to, you know, be an excellent engineer. Yeah, and, and the, one of the ways that we work is when a ticket comes in. We don't. We uh, we're not a. Uh, we have a customer coordinator who intakes all the tickets and then routes those to the appropriate engineers. We don't have a, a live answer help desk where people are just calling in and uh, and any engineer or or help desk person can pick up. And so one of the things that we do is as cases come in, those cases are are uh, tickets come in. They're stacked on each engineer. So an engineer will have. Uh, we'll typically schedule at either 15 or 30 minute segments for each one of the tickets, and so an engineer will will fill up their day as best as we can uh, with cases. And so this is this is a key part of that to let them know, hey, I'm working on this right now. I've got this next one. And there's kind of a back and forth flow. So if you get a customer updated, you know that you know I can I can get to this customer right after I finish this ticket because it's not necessarily going to take me that whole amount of time. Um, but this helps us kind of work inside in and out of that. Um, the, the, so on, on the different buttons that we have here, we have there's a button that says done yet. Um, done yet is a flag if the if if the uh, 
our coordinator wants to know if the person is done yet, we just flag that ticket to uh, done yet and change it to a done yet status on that ticket. And then that flags the, uh, the, the person so that they know that they need to respond to that uh, ticket and lets us know, hey, can we close this? Are you done? I, I'm not seeing, you know, I just want to know where we're at. Um, the next field, which is the my reopen tickets, is if a ticket, if somebody responds back, that ticket will be reopened. So it lets you know, hey, I closed this ticket, but for some reason it's been reopened. So it's 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 somewhat the same as customer updated, but not uh, not always. Yeah, and it's one of those important things with ConnectWise. Now that ConnectWise allows you to add, you know, have it automatically re-add the resources, you know, the last resources on a closed ticket, if it's reopened via the portal or via email, uh, to make sure you have that setting set so that it allows it to flag the actual uh, last person working on it is, is what we have here. Yeah, it helps with continuity and stuff. Yeah. Um, the the other one, which is update priority, is when tickets come in. We uh, typically leave the priority to change me so that the person can properly categorize the request from the user. And so in this case, in this board, there's five tickets that still need the, the priority updated. And, and this helps us to, uh, this, this, button, this uh, gadget as well as uh, missing agreements is one of those types of things where it's helping people to do and perform the right actions that are needed for the ticket so that we know that it's being done right, that we're covering as much as we can up front so that by the time we get to, to billing and to finalizing and sending customers um, their, uh, their, their, service, uh, their services list for the, for the month, it all comes out clean. So, and it also helps with time entry if I'm looking at guys' time cards and those types of things. It, everything's already correct and it saves so much time because all we're doing is we're trying to catch everything up front so that way when it comes through the system and it goes through all the different processes that we do uh, post the ticket, we catch all that stuff, so it's really it's really helpful for that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's one of the, one of our philosophies that we have at, uh, at Connections for Business as well as with Connect Smart is it's really about giving people tools. And a lot of times, uh, yeah, when some, when somebody buys Connect Smart, it'll be you know an owner has purchased Connect Smart, they they've seen it at a show, or they you know somebody told them this is a great thing, they buy it and they take it to their engineers, and their engineers are saying. Okay, great. Now it's just something for me to, you know, for you know, something that they're going to keep track of me on. And we have seen, you know, Connect Smart, where I would say, kind of improperly used as a tool to beat somebody over the head with, of you know, micromanaging them, making sure that they're doing all the stuff that they're supposed to be doing. But that really isn't the. It's not really the thought process behind it. And you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, our internal staff, you know, how much they rely on it both on the, you know, the MSP as well as uh, in Connect Smart itself to, you know, to be able to drive the, you know, the processes that they're supposed to be doing. And, and you know, I, I really believe that if I haven't, if I haven't been able to figure out how we can have that as a dashboard item, if we haven't, you know, gotten our process, have ConnectWise configured properly or uh, LabTech, say all those different pieces tied together to where I can make something visible on a dashboard, then I'm not going to hold them responsible to it. Uh, I really want to make sure that I'm providing all the tools to where it's very simple. Again, where they're not, you know, which process am I supposed to follow to go check this and to check the other thing and to make sure I don't miss X and don't miss Y, don't miss Z. It's all it's all put into the dashboard so that they can do their job and really focus on what they're hired for. Mm -hmm. um, the other ones are uh, my uh, my due date my uh, my due today. Uh, so that's items that we're using the uh, the where the due date is set on the on the service request, so that way we can track it and know, hey, these are these are things that are going to be done. We actually um, one of the cool things that's going on here that might not be visible is that we're actually we're actually spanning multiple service boards uh, within the system. So it's not like we're looking at one one part of ConnectWise. We're actually we could actually this in in our world you could actually be spanning eight or ten different service boards. Um, but it's all being pulled into one view. So my due today could be something that's due because the ticket came in today and we need to get it done today because of the SLA set to it, or it could be a task that I, I have this user and something's not coming in for a couple days and we know we need to follow up and so we, we know that that's going to be our due date because that's when everything's going to happen. So that could be, you know, that could be a few days out. So. Yeah. Um, the, the other part is missing config. So one of the things we uh, insist upon here is any ticket that's worked on, we need to attach a configuration record to it so that we can look at it and dig in further to understand, well, 
you know, how many times, you know, the, the classic, hey, how many times has this PC had a service ticket opened on it? Um, and that's where we capture that. So if a ticket goes through and an engineer uh, forgets during their, during their session to attach a config record, uh, it's going to remind them. So usually the guys know to go ahead and put the configuration on right as they're first working with the customer, but sometimes, you know, it gets missed, um, and we understand that. And this is a way to remind them, hey, you forgot to put that on there, throw that on there. Um, the other one is the My Tickets, which shows these are the total number of tickets that I currently have assigned to me as an engineer. So it kind of gives me an idea of where I'm at and how do I manage that to zero or how do I communicate that with our coordinator and with the service manager to make sure that they know, hey, I, only, I know that I have 10 tickets right now. Um, they don't necessarily have to explain that to me. I can drill down into their board and say, well, what 10 tickets do you have open right now? Let me look at those. And I can just get a quick view from here and say, okay, I know what they're working on. I know that you know, he has these 10 issues and he's going to get those done on this day. Um, the, the, there's two more here. on The one was my tickets without status of change for 40 minutes. So this one's kind of a, I'm not always quite sure what the, what the formula is on this one. Um, but what we're doing is we're looking at and saying, if I have a ticket and I haven't changed status, so let's say I put this in, the, in progress and I'm working on the ticket, and then I forget <clears throat> and I go to lunch, and, uh, and, I, and I still leave my ticket in progress, then it's, it's this flags you and says, hey, you're not supposed to do that. And, and we, what we try to do is try to keep our, it's, it's to keep the guys uh, focused and to keep our ticket times down because we don't want uh, large straggler tickets where things are get lost for several hours. So it's a good, this is a good reminder to let us know or let, let the engineer know that you're, you've got some stuff open that shouldn't be open that long and or you need to put it in the right status. So that we yeah. can start to stop the clock on it. Yeah, and the you know, and one of the the things this is really uh, primarily I dropped this one on here uh, on for Jen, uh, which obviously if I if I had this on a, a um, on my L1 guys, this is a, a totally different thing. Because usually we want our L1 guys to only have uh, you know one thing that's in progress at a time, uh, because of that whole myth of multitasking. And uh, we don't want them also getting lost because most engineers, you know, once they grab that, uh, they grab that issue by the, you know, they grab it by the scruff of the neck and they're not going to let go. And so it's really easy to lose track of that time. And so, uh, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, normally we would have this restricted to just a ticket that's currently in progress. And so that in progress ticket, hey, how long have, have you lost track of time? Hey, you've got, you've been, you know, you've already been on this, you know, over 40 minutes. You, you need to have asked for help. You need to escalate something. You're going to be blowing an SLA. Uh, so it just really gives that, uh, you know, again, that, uh, that little additional nudge to the engineer who's working on, on a ticket that they may have lost track of time. Yeah, and on a real-world system, that number is usually at zero and or right. <laughs> right. one, one or two. It's not a 39 would be, you, you just kind of blow the poor guy away, and he'd be probably yeah. having a heart attack on the floor right now. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> um, and then the bottom part, it just kind of gives an idea, helps per give a person an idea of where their workload is at uh, and tickets by status. And these are the different, uh, since this is a sample that doesn't have all, our our same statuses. Um, obviously, we have less statuses than this, but it gives you an idea of where you're at uh, with the work, uh, so that you can understand where you're at, where where you can focus your time. And this this helps to drive discussions when the coordinator is meeting with the with the with our our each one of the team members every day to make sure where they're at with their tickets. It helps them kind of take a quick snapshot view as a as a team and say, hey, where do you need help? Where we can where can we help you move this along? Excellent. Cool. Yeah, and I'll uh, just mention we also did add uh, I added these in recently here. You know, some of those common things that come that come up while people are in the middle of doing something else is, uh, you know, how often do you get that question? Hey, can you go take a look at that, you know, ticket X Y Z? So we added in kind of those shortcut buttons for you to go ahead and do the, uh, you know, the ConnectWise lookup on a ticket. And my uh, internet connection is running a little bit slow there. You know, create your ticket, view your calendar, view your timesheets. So really, we can give that full view of all the information that they need, just give them the ability to, you know, do those most commonly used tasks and uh, be able to focus on being an engineer. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate you uh, joining me to, uh, today, Rob. And if, uh, if anyone has any questions on anything that we've talked about, uh, please feel free to drop that into the, the questions there on uh, GoToWebinar. 
and this will be uh, saved and we'll uh, post this for anyone who would like to review this in the future and uh, try to keep this into keep it short and sweet and if there's no questions then uh, feel free to give us a call at any time uh, you can see uh, connectsmart.com uh, you can contact us there and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you thanks and uh, have a wonderful day